course, a danger man here in Devin Fitzgerald. The guy can really, really hit. Had a big summer. And I, you really need to look no further than look at the lineup card. If you're hitting fourth for Canes National and Jupiter, you're probably pretty good. That That is such a factual statement. Context clues give it away, <laughs> don't they? <laughs> He's an NC State commit. He's out of Margate, Florida. Goes to Stoneman Douglas High School. A national champion. National champion, that's right. Powerhouse, can we call them that? Absolutely. Yeah. Leggett Walford got ahead, 0-2. He fires a ball one in to Fitzgerald. Leggett's been doing a pretty good job. It's, it's mid-80s with the fastball. He's been 85, 86 for the most part. There's a, a bigger breaking curveball that we've seen. He's attacking the zone. He's trying to, to maintain the edges, maintain leverage. That ball's going to get down right in front of the left fielder. So he battles and is able to put the ball in play, extends the inning for the Canes. So now they've got runners on first and second, two away. And that's actually a pretty good job there by Corey Moore, the left fielder from top tier. Like, that's not a play you're going to be able to come in and necessarily make unless you lay out. And I don't know if it was close enough for that anyway. So you got to kind of stop yourself short. It's easy to bobble that. It's easy to let and it go past by you. you. Yes. So for him to uh, keeping Orlando at second there, that's a little bit bigger of a play than you'd think on the surface. Great point. Chris Newstrom, the batter with two away. Top one, Canes. Top tier, Ruse. Both 1-0 and oh in pool play, looking to advance to 2-0. and oh. Newstrom, one of the more athletically versatile players in the country. He's, you see he's listed as a catcher there. He is catching, but he also is a pretty good outfielder. We've seen him play third base. Uh, he's a good athlete overall. There's bat speed there. There's just lots of tools at his disposal. A really good, well-rounded player. From Scottsdale, committed to Tennessee. Tony Vitello's out here. Mm -hmm. So Tony walking around. <laughs> How much orange did he have on? Uh, I think today was more of an understated, <laughs> you know, like more of a like a complimentary orange as opposed to a, a predominant orange. He's got some options. <laughs> Two-o count to Newstrom. Yeah. Leaves it high. Three-o. Hey, we asked these guys to make World Series predictions, by the way. I love that Darren had these guys do it. So Newstrom's got the Dodgers mm -hmm. going all the way. Safe pick. I liked uh, yesterday the game I called with Darren. Uh, there was a starter from uh, the, the top-tier five-star combo platter team, uh, Tomas Valencius, yeah. who is a native of Illinois. Okay. And he said, uh, in his World Series prediction, he said, the Chicago White Sox. <laughs> hey, man, in stick with your crew. 2030? Stick with your crew, man. <laughs> In I got 2100, 2100. <laughs> what year? Newstrom lays off and works the two out walk to load him up. It's going to bring up Gabe Frazier. This is what you wanted to avoid, uh, obviously, when you're at Leggett there on the mound. He got the first two outs, issued a walk to Orlando in what was an at bat where I thought he pitched him pretty well. Uh, but, you know, tough luck walk against the number one player in the country, fine. But then single, walk again, now bases are loaded. It's the Canes. Gabe Frazier's really good. You know, this is the danger zone you, you want to try and avoid. And, yeah, we're going to have a, a visit to the mound here. All right, we mentioned pool play. Both of these teams 1-0. From yesterday, this is just day two in Jupiter, Florida, the 25th annual Worldwood Bat World Championship. You can see there, they're at the top of Pool K. Team Elite Prime, they fell to top tier Ruse, and Rawlings National fell to Canes National. For the folks at home, uh, obviously the winner of each pool automatically advances into bracket play. 
There are several uh, what end up being wild card spots. Okay. Generally speaking, if you lose two games, you're not going to make the playoffs. Okay. But if you win two and, and if there's ties in there, because we count ties as half a win, half a loss. So th- there's you don't have to win all your games necessarily to make it into the playoffs. But if you lose two, you're probably going to be out. Okay. Seven inning game, two hour limit. Bases loaded, two away. Gabe Frazier at the plate, takes strike one. Another left-on-left matchup here. We talked about uh, talked about the left-handedness of this Canes lineup, and Morlando had no problem with it, obviously working that walk, but we saw some weak contact early uh, in the, the left-handed lineup. Big swing from Frazier. Frazier from Westminster, California, committed to Arkansas. Goes to Orange Lutheran. This is actually Noah Franco. My apologies to Noah. Sometimes we get a little switch in the lineup. We roll with it. Noah Franco, another All-American, perfect game, All-American. Coming in from the left side. Goes down and gets it. Hits it slowly on the ground. All the way across the diamond. Great play. A run comes home. The throw just not quite in time from Jace Kohler. Just not a, just not much Kohler could do there. It, it, the ball was hit pretty slowly to his right. He had to come in and change angles and still throw. And it was a good play. I think he did all he could. It's just that was that was really hit softly and in the right spot. And, uh, made a good throw across, but Franco's a good athlete and as a left-handed hitter getting out of the box, obviously, the, and the Canes are take the lead. Canes up 1-0 over top tier Ruse. Bases still loaded. Two away. Here's Gabe Frazier. Here we go. Hello, Gabe. Great to see you. Arkansas commit right here. And another left-handed bat. Multi-sport athlete, which we love to see. Baseball, football, soccer. You know, I talked to Jacob Lombard yesterday. We know George played soccer, but Jacob takes soccer really seriously, gets a lot out of it. And I feel like that plays here, speed, agility, Mm -hmm. being able to move your body in different directions quickly, plays at baseball. Absolutely. There's, you know, any sport, you can pick out the the benefits of doing it. You know what I mean? As they pertain to baseball for the most part. And soccer's without question one of them, given what you said, the athleticism, the footwork. I love dudes who wrestle. <laughs> you know, I like didn't know that about really you. Really strong hands, yeah. like really athletic and very balanced. Their muscles have muscles. Yes, and they, they can they understand how to like work from their core, yeah. you know, they understand leverage. Big swing and a miss for strike two from Leggett Walford. Two two count, base is still loaded, two away top one. And obviously I've been in Canada so much in the last couple of years. I love hockey players too. Of course. So it sounds like you like athletes. I do like athletes. Is That's that fair true. to say? It's a true story. Okay. It's a true story. Okay. 2 2 pitch. This is low, full count. This is, you know, this is what the Canes will do to you. They're more than willing to, to outslug you. They're more than willing to, you know, rake you around the yard. But they are just as willing to sit back and let you walk them and let you beat yourself. It's so impressive to me. Maybe more than anything else, the patience they can show. 3 2. Swing and a miss. So Leggett Walford gets a strikeout, limits the damage from this dangerous Canes team. But the Canes National New York Mets go up one to nothing over top tier ruse. We head to the bottom of the first in Jupiter when we come back. Oh, yeah. Good way for this one.
to that. Yep. Well, they've got a tall task on the mound for the Canes. Max Ulrich, the left-handed pitcher out of Wardbury, Minnesota, committed to Texas A&M. Yeah, big physical lefty. We saw him at the National Showcase back in July in Phoenix. Uh, pretty good stuff, lots to like. He, he doesn't really walk that many guys. 24 strikeouts against six walks in 13 innings this uh, this year in terms of PG events. That's you know still a walk every other inning or so. You want less than that. But as a high school guy, you usually take that when it comes with a power arm, especially from the left side of the play, or left side. So good stuff. Um, Thank you very much to our production crew bringing us updated lineups. Updated we appreciate lineups. that. Thank you, Chloe. All right, so leading off for this team, Darielle Perella. Uncommitted out of Tampa, Florida. Goes to Tampa Jesuit High School. And he takes ball and high. So you saw Ulrich at the National Showcase. Is that mm -hmm. right? Yep. Yep. So what'd you think? Up to, you know, he's into the low 90s with the fastball. He's a, he's a pretty physical guy. Um, we liked the uh, the quality of the secondary stuff. A little inconsistent, but as a cold weather arm, you know, with, with the physicality and the body type that he has, along with the arm talent, uh, just a, a lot to like in terms of the long-term projection here for sure. Fires that pitch in for strike one. Ball's in the air. It's going to stay on the infield. Oh, Franco will make the grab. <laughs> One away. DJ McQuillan comes up. Brian, you mentioned this is a guy. Keep an eye on him for sure. Playing first base this afternoon. Yeah, the left-handed power is, is the standout tool here. I, I may be misspeaking here, but I also think he does some catching. I think that's the case. Um, but either way, catcher, first base, DH, whatever it's going to end up being, uh, dude has serious, serious power from the left side of the plate, big offensive force. You watch a strike one from Ulrich. Sitting, at, sitting right at about 88, 89 so far uh, is Arlick, but uh, kind of painting it over that outer edge against lefties here. You can see that's a really tough pitch to do anything with. Another one there. Quillen out of St. John, Indiana, committed to Louisville. He's the number one third baseman in the state of Indiana, number three player overall in his class. Takes ball one high. Arla creates pretty good angle to the plate. You can see that, especially against left-handed hitters. Kind of hides it pretty well. Swing and a miss. Gets the strikeout two away for the Canes. Great pitch there from Arlick. Just goes upstairs with the fastball. He'd been trying to, to paint away, 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 away with fastball and breaking ball. That one was just a fastball neck high that he let rip. Gets a swing and miss. Special shouts out, Danny, to... Uh, Who we got? Uh, you know, we got a, we got, <laughs> we got? A, we got a shout out our PG team members who are texting us from home. It's TJ Ansley texting all the way from Columbus, Ohio. What's up, TJ? Shouts out, TJ. Go blue. <laughs> There is no Major League Baseball today, so this is the premier place to be for baseball. Absolutely. Keep it locked to PGTV. This is Atticus Huffstetler. Outstanding. Thank you. He's behind 0-2. Fouls that pitch off. Huffstetler's nickname, I feel like you'd like this. Oh, excuse me. We're right. We're right. We're right. This, this is tough stuff. Yep, yeah. yep. That one's jammed. It's a fair ball, and they're going to get the out. So we'll get back to that in a little bit. Uh, a nice inning for the Canes. They're going to come back in the second with a one run lead.
Hey, welcome back to Jupiter, Florida, the 2023 WWBA World Championship. Top two, Canes National, New York, New York Mets, and top tier Ruse in this game. Canes National up one nothing. Could have been worse, though, in the first in inning, Brian. Excuse me, Jackson Leggett Walford getting out of a bases loaded jam. Yeah, and it, he had to do it kind of on his own. Like that was, you know, you're left on left in that situation. He'd done a pretty good job pitching through the, the tough part of the Canes lineup. The, the entire Canes lineup's a tough part. But <laughs> the point being, like, I, you know, it, I know he'd given up the walk and that scored the run, and then there was an infield hit, and it was kind of unlucky. And so I was, I was pumped to see him really finish that inning because he did, think, I think, pitch better than what the results looked like in that first. No doubt. Great job by him. He's facing Jack Haferkamp out of Carl's bad California US UCSB commit swings through strike one he was one of three players yesterday with a double they had five players with at least one RBI as well his team absolutely crushed Hafer Camp is a, a really unique athlete. Like he's very, very long bodied. He's every bit of 6'4. Maybe he's even a little taller than that. But he runs like a 6'4, 6'3, you know, in the 60 yard dash. And he's got arm strength and there's bat speed there. And it's easy to see him filling out more and adding some more power. It's, it's an intriguing collection. It's not all that polished yet. It's not all that refined yet. But there's a lot to like there in terms of the tools and the ingredients. I mean, you can just see when he steps in the box and you're looking at the umpire. The comparison that you see there. <laughs> that pitch fouled off. Full count. By the way, you're getting a little glimpse from these angles of the amount of people that are watching this game. They're here to see this matchup. These two teams, 1-0 and in pool play, looking to improve to 2-0, oh, but you can kind of just see there. The scouts behind taking a look at these two. I love that we have the lime green cart front and center. There. You got to stand out. That's outstanding. How about that standout pitch? Gets the strike out of Haferkamp. That's back-to-back -back at bats now that he's uh, finished off hitters just going upstairs with the fastball. And that's all that is. That's just fastball a little bit above the letters. It's a ball if you take it, but it's tough to lay off of that, and he knows it, and he keeps putting it there, and he's having success. Yeah, so big opportunity for him right now against the Canes as Brandon Novi steps in. He's uncommitted, and so Leggett Walford having an opportunity to face some of the best bats that exist in the, not just the 2024 class. The ball's hit on the ground. It gets by the glove of the shortstop. Jace Kohler, so a one-out base hit for Novi. Novi, uh, very physical there. Obviously, you can just see that as you're looking at him, a very physical right-handed hitter. Uh, plays a, a bunch of different positions. He's a corner infielder. He's a DH. Uh, you know, he kind of plays all over the place. North Carolina State commit, but big physical right-handed juice. Back to the top, Dante Nori. We know he's got the speed. Mississippi State commit. Yesterday, I was watching some of their game, Brian, and there were a couple foul balls. He was on second base, and he went to steal on most of them. He was gassed. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> he was gassed, but it paid off. He ended up coming home eventually. But you know when you're on base, and you know you're going, and it's a foul ball, and you got to go back. And when it happens consecutively, I think that's one of the worst things as a base runner. And he's one of those fast guys that, like, you don't have to wait long to find out that he's fast. He wants to run. Yeah. Like he's trying to steal bases. He's trying to, you know, turn a single into a triple, uh, those sort of things. So it's <laughs> he's going to be running, and that's another good piece of hitting there inside out. Just puts the bat on the ball. Just gives the Canes two base runners, top two, one away. That'll bring up Owen Pano. Yeah, and this is just, that's vintage Nori. Uh, you know, he's not trying to do too much. He stays compact with his hands. He hits it back where it's pitched. He has power. As I said in the open, he's one of the physically strongest players in the country. Dude is deadlifting like 700 pounds, something ridiculous like that. He's very, very physical. He has power. But as a leadoff hitter, his goal is, hey, I'm going to, you hit line drives to all parts of the ballpark. I'm going to hit a bunch of doubles and run. And, you know, he doesn't have room in front of him to steal now. But if second base was empty, no you doubt. bet he'd be running. No doubt. Pano popped out his first at bat. <laughs> Liggett Walford fires in for strike one. It's a 1-1 one -one count. Pop 
pop up on the infield. Kohler's going to come in and grab it. Going to take charge. Nice job by him. Not an easy play, especially with what the sky is doing right now. Yeah. That That's easily lost in the sky. That is a baseball-colored sky right now. <laughs> But that's, that's what you're supposed to do is the shortstop. You're the captain of the infield. Ball goes up in the air. You decide who takes it. And if it's yours, get everybody else all the way. All right, so two away. Kane's lead by one. And the number one player in the class of 2024, PJ Morlando at the plate. Now you're presented with an interesting situation here. You know, if you're Leggett and it's this is the number one player in the country, you, you don't really want to like throw him a fastball down the middle. That's not what you want to do. So you generally you're thinking like, all right, we have a base open. I could maybe pitch around this guy a little bit. Right. But there's no breaks in this lineup. There, you know, the, hitting right behind him is, is another stud. It, you know, every single time it's Fitzgerald who already has a laser, and then it's Newstrom and Frazier and Franco and so on and so forth. So there's really because because of the the no breaks of this Canes lineup, there really is no way to pitch around the guys. No, and to be honest, what Leggett Walford told us is he attacks hitters. He's got a dog mentality on the mound. So I'm not surprised if he's going to go after Morlando. He doesn't seem like the kind of guy who's going to try to work around him. You obviously want to be careful because you can, but you've got two away. Morlando walked his first at bat, so you know he's already staying a bit more patient. Gets a hold of that one, drops it into right field. It's going to bring home one run sliding in to give the Canes a two to nothing lead. PJ Morlando, the consummate professional here in his final amateur baseball event, or travel ball event, excuse me, but not trying to do too much, just gets barrel on a single and come tearing around third base. Coach Lowry's waving him, wheeling him <laughs> from third base. And then you see, of course, Dante Nori right behind him, already around third, trying to, to see if he's got a score. Morlando paying attention to the throw, goes into second base. The throw is air mailed. And now the Canes are right back in the same situation. Then on second and third, we have the four hitter up, or the five hitter up now, excuse me. But that constant pressure, you cannot make mistakes against a team like this. They're just so smart. You can't smart. make mistakes. And the, a mistake there is air mailing that throw. Right? You're probably never going to throw that guy out of the plate, so why not save the extra base against you uh, and throw it on a line, have it get cut. But again, smart by Morlando to be there, smart by Nori to continue coming around third base. And now we're going to see a pitching change. And hey, I, we talked about it. I thought that Leggett Walford pitched pretty well. 100%. I, you know. Got out of the jam in the first inning, left those runners on, limited the Canes to a run, which is not easy to do with their lineup that is so meaty. When we come back, we'll introduce you to Top Tier Roo's new arm. They trail by two, top two, two runners on, two away. We'll be back. I never let myself believe that I was going to be in the big leagues. I always worked for it until I achieved it. Back in Puerto Rico, I remember my dad hitting me ground balls from the top of the hill. That forced me to always move my feet. There were no limits to where I could go, so I played with no limits. Welcome back to Jupiter, Florida, golf cart capital of the world. Canes National New York Mets leads two to nothing over top tier Ruse. Our game in the top of the second on PG TV. We've got a pitching change for the Ruse taking over on the mound. Right-handed pitcher Logan Baisley. 6'3", 190-pound right-hander from Lambda Lakes, Florida. An uncommitted guy. Another one ranked him as a high follow. Uh, we'll be updating our eval here, of course, right now. And he has quite the task. Facing the four hole hitter, Devin Fitzgerald. Who, of course, as a switch hitter, now makes the Canes even more left handed. 100%. Two on, two away. Oh 
in the air, right field. Going back to the trees. Whoa, what a catch by the right fielder. He brings it in, a ball at the track. We thought it was going out. What Good an incredible catch. I can't catch. wait to see this replay. That Jack way. Ernest brings it back. We were we, we have a pretty good angle to that, you know, right from where we're sitting. That was remarkable. He just kind of flung his hand up over his head. I don't even know if he saw it at the end. <laughs> that was remarkable. Incredible play <laughs> once again. Top tier ruse. Get out of a little bit of a jam. The Canes, though, they have a 2 nothing lead. We go to the bottom of the second. It is a beautiful afternoon, Friday afternoon in Jupiter, Florida, the 2023 WWBA World Championship. I'm Danny Wexelman with Brian Sikowski. The Canes are up two to nothing over the Ruse. These team teams both one and zero in pool play, looking to advance to two and zero. The Ruse doing a good job of limiting the damage that the Canes are capable of. So it's a close game so far in this one. Our second game on PG TV this afternoon, Brian. And Devin Fitzgerald just came. Uh, the most remarkable catch I've ever seen away from clearing the bases there to add to this damage, but uh, that was an unbelievable play in, in right field to end that inning. But Jack anyways. Ernest. Jack Ernest out yes. there. Stuck the glove up, made the Outstanding. catch. Outstanding. But look how dangerous this lineup is. It's exactly what we're talking about. You want to pitch around him, the next guy comes up and can go deep. You want to try to get to the bottom of the lineup? Nah. Look at these, all these guys in the top 100. And most of them are hitters. Orlando, if Franco's a two-way guy, Nori, Paino, Hafferkamp, Fitzgerald, those are all bats. It, Theophilus is, is one of the top pitchers in the 25 class. We saw that, but that those ranked guys are mostly hitters. Those top 100 ranked guys, every single player on their team is ranked. Excuse me. Alex Walker steps up, uncommitted out of Palm Harbor, Florida. Facing Max Ulrich back out on the mound for the Canes with a two to nothing lead. Arlick, no reason to do anything other than what you did in the first. Just throwing strikes at 88 90 at the fastball, 88 89. Uh, landing a breaker, but he didn't really need it that much. There's another swing and miss in the zone on a fastball. It's tough for, uh, he's got that low release height, that lower release height. He doesn't really get all the way up on top of the ball, so he kind of has a little bit of those uh, run ride capabilities. Excuse me. Um, cut ride fastballs, my mistake. But that why one of the reasons why you see him miss so many bats in the zone with his fastball, even beyond just the fact that he throws pretty hard. And that's something that can continue to develop. I feel like once you're able, you saw it there? Yeah, that was just a, another fastball that was riding in on the hands that you take an empty swing at and you got a piece of, but like you have no business swinging at that pitch. But the, the way that the fastball shape moves and the way that he releases it, that makes it look like it's a strike. Another one there. That's above the zone, swing and miss, 88, 89 miles an hour. We can look specifically, but uh, the point being like that fastball quality is good, not only in part because of the characteristics of the pitch, but because of the way that he throws it. Yeah, no chance. Nice job by him. One away in the bottom of the second. Jack Ernest, who just made that incredible web gem, will step up to the plate. Out of Tampa, Florida, uncommitted. Newstrom doing a pretty good job behind the plate today in terms of receiving. Th those are tough pitches to receive specifically. We'll get to it after this. Nice job throwing across the diamond. 
Oh, and Pano, that big body coming at you. It's like a freight train yeah. watching him run across. Just a really, you know, just a, a standard athletic play. Comes in, stays balanced, doesn't panic, has plenty of arm strength, gets it over there. Harder and a good than stretch it looks. By he Franco. made that look easy. Yep. That's not an easy play. That's a more difficult play and a great stretch by Franco, too, who's a great athlete over there at first base. So Corey Moore comes up. Fouls off strike one. It's back to Newstrom receiving yeah, down the plate. It's for, you know, obviously you're going you're gonna to be right-handed when you catch. Your glove is on your left hand. And when there's a left-handed pitcher on the mound and he's throwing these kind of cutting fastballs that are down and in, very, very tough to get your thumb underneath that and receive it properly, he's doing a good job of it, as is Arlick throwing strikes. What do you say we go to the third? Let's go to the third inning. The Canes, they're up by two. We'll be back. Welcome back. Check this scene out. This is where the action is at this complex, Jupiter, Florida. Roger Dean, the WWBA World Championship. Thanks for hanging out with us on PGTV. The Canes are up two to nothing, top three. This complex is packed with scouts, college scouts, pro scouts, agents, players, top players, top teams, top travel teams in the country. They all come down to Jupiter, Florida for a week in October, in the middle of the postseason, and they get to play some of them for the last time with their travel teams. It's, uh, it, you know, we talk about it every time we do a broadcast from here, or anytime we do anything. It is a special vibe. It's a special environment. It's, it's a lot more of a festival uh, than it is, you know, just a, a tournament. It's a lot more of a, of a family reunion in some ways than it is just a tournament. And, uh, we look forward to it each and every year. It's it's a big circle on my calendar personally, and I know it is for you too, Danny. Oh, but yeah. we love it down here. Our teams get together, bring you all the good stuff. Our social team working overtime. Chris Newstrom, the batter. We talked a lot about him behind the plate, what he's done so far with Max Ulrich. Back out on the mound for the Ruse team. Logan Baisley. 2-1 pitch coming to Newstrom. Fouls it off to even the count. I look to my left, I've got golf carts. I look to my right, I've got carts. Surrounded by golf carts. If you don't see any carts in Jupiter, look, just turn around. They haunt There's you. one behind you. <laughs> someone is behind you in a golf cart. Check it out. Baisley's working mostly in the mid-80s with his fastball. He's been 83-85. Closed out the last inning getting that fly ball from Fitzgerald at 85. Long, lanky body. He's got some room to fill. The operation's pretty smooth in general, up to 85. Maybe maybe he'll touch higher here, but an interesting uncommitted arm for sure. His self-scouting kind of hits on that, Brian. Good size. It's going to get bigger and stronger. Milo is continuing to progress season by season, throw strikes. Ball has a good arm side run. It's got good mound presence. Gets him to reach in the swing and miss. 
That's a really good breaking ball there. He'd thrown nothing but fastball. And granted, he'd only thrown seven or eight pitches prior to that. But the point being, that's the first breaker we've seen. It's straight down vertical curveball that held that fastball playing for a little while. And Neustra missed it by about three and a half feet. He's got some length on the mound. You can see it. No, Franco steps up. Swing and a miss from him. We love a confident OO hack. I love that. <laughs> no I know he swung and missed there, but I, I love it. <laughs> Why wouldn't you? There we go. Now we're timing it up. That's all right. Past our tent. Foul territory. So Baisley ahead, 0-2. Franco not going to get rattled with two strikes. He's comfortable hitting. You see him get a little bit more spread out. That one's in the air, left side. Coming over, tries to make the diving play, unable to do so. And it looks like it's a fair ball. Franco is heading for third. And he's going to go home. We're going to have to take a look at that one. It looks like the ball is just under the fence, unable to grab. Let's see it, Brian. Yeah, this will be good on the replay. This was a pretty good swing. I thought that was going foul uh, off the bat, but pretty good inside-out swing. Dove for it. I can't tell if that was inside the line or not. But either way, when it goes out of play there, that should send him back to second base. It looks like the umpire here called it foul. Plate guy was signaling fair, that's for sure. And yeah, it looks like they're gonna send Franco back to second base. That should be a ground rule double. Because if it's landed fair, like that's fine, it's a fair ball, but it rolled out of that open gate and that's just out of play, that's no one's fault. So that'll be a ground rule double. Good job by the umpire and crew to get it right. And also a good job by Tim Lowry to just keep waving him. Hey, maybe they'll let you go home. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> I believe that was Corey Moore, by the way, in left field who made that diving attempt. Appreciate the effort over there. An attempted bump, bunt by Gabe Frazier here. <laughs> that was a, uh, you can tell he's from SoCal. Yeah. <laughs> he's but like, let's, let's move him over. That was more of a bunt for a hit attempt than it was an outright sacrifice, which is my preferred kind anyways. But It's a ball, lines it into the outfield. Another diving effort gets out of the way to the track. So Franco's going to score. And that's an RBI. For Gabe Frazier, the Canes are up three to nothing. Corey Moore flying around in left field, making like the, absolutely sacrificing his body out there. Like good for you know, I know he hasn't come up with either one of them. Not that either one was his fault, but yeah, it, after a, a bunt for a hit attempt, we get a laser into the into the opposite field gap and a a great attempt there by Moore again, full extension laying out. But uh, just like that, it's three nothing Canes. Just like that, there's another ball in the gap. Just like that, they're threatening still, and we have another mound visit. So they returned those six hitters the Canes did from their summer team. So obviously that's a huge help. And then they've also added some pieces on the mound to try and replace one of the best staffs they said they've ever had in program history this summer. They said they've been to a bunch of scouting events trying to find the right guys. They added Jack Haferkamp, Will Sanford, Christopher Cespedes, Henry Prindle. They're from their other Canes affiliate teams. Mm -hmm. And they do a good job of, uh, you know, consistently self-scouting consistently you know mining their their own organization to find players who should be moving up in the org players who should be playing on you know the premier teams they do a good job of self-scouting that and they usually do uh, do the right thing in terms of promoting guys uh, they play a very select few number of underclassmen every year on their 17 u premier teams it's maybe one guy but that guy you can bet is a dude. And it if, works for yeah, them. Yep, that, absolutely. That recipe has worked for yep. them. The self-scouting part is important, especially in an org as big as the Canes. It's, it's understanding your own players just as much as you understand other ones and then uh, adjusting rosters uh, to match that. And they do a great job of that. All right, so Frazier tried to take third. He has to go back. Jack Haferkamp lines this ball, drops it into center field. Frazier gets tripped up at third, though. He gets tripped up and doesn't make it home. His dugout is going to <laughs> abuse him on that. As long as he's fine. He looks fine. He looks like, fine. He didn't get hurt or anything, but his dugout is going to let him have that one. Nice, nice tackle blade of grass coming around the third base back there. 
And, yeah, he's going to score. He's rolling. Like, that's a good athlete and good runner. And he just, whoops. Too much speed. We're going to have to clip that as a gift. Too much speed. And send it to him. Yeah. Gabe Frazier. Let's get the social team on it. He's trying to point to a divot <laughs> in the dirt. But, dude, <laughs> I think that was happening before there's you no, got there, man. There's no divot there. That was <laughs> happening at third base, <laughs> not after. <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> and here come, uh, obviously, as we have another pitching change here, here comes the Canes, To uh, I'm sure that the things that they've said to him, maybe it's good we don't have a live mic there. <laughs> probably good. It's probably good. They got everybody out there at this point talking to him. All in good fun. All right, so we are going to have a pitching change for the Ruse. They're trailing by three, both teams 1-0 and in pool play. From yesterday, so one of these teams looking to advance to 2-0 and in pool play, we talked about how important that is. So when we come back, we'll introduce you to the new arm on the mound. Top three, Canes lead by three. Hey, welcome back. Check out this scene, our drone shot, so you can really get the full scope of what we're working with at Roger Dean. The Cardinals, the Marlins sharing this complex. The Marlins trying to make that run through the World Series. They're eliminated, but how awesome is it to see that team get to the postseason? In my eyes, Brian, for the first time in 20 years, I don't count 2020, sorry, everybody. I just don't. I really don't. The Cardinals looking to bounce back after this year. We get to take over the complex here for a whole week, Jupiter, Florida, the WWBA World Championship back on PGTV. Welcome back. Canes lead three to nothing over top tier. We've got a new arm on the mound for top tier. Brady Wright, the righty, takes over. Does it make sense for top tier to, you know, it, hey, we maybe are not going to win this game. Maybe we're not going to come back. Let's throw a bunch of our guys. Okay. Let's get them all in an inning or two. And then, hey, we got to win tomorrow. Yeah. And if we can sneak into the playoffs, then, hey, all of a sudden, all these guys that we threw against the Canes are going to be eligible to pitch again because right. you kept their pitch counts down. It's a big deal. Absolutely. So Hafer Camp took second. Frazier is creeping down the third base line. Brandon Novi is the batter. You can see the lead. It's going to creep down the third base line pretty far. Looks like that got him, huh? Yep, ran in and got him. Maybe on the elbow or the arm. He sold it either way. So that's going to make the bases full. Just one away. Back to the top, Dante Nori. This is, again, it's another inning where the Canes have the bases loaded. You know, they're just, they'll get hit, they'll walk. As you saw, they're willing to bunt for a hit. They're willing to, to play long ball. They're willing to, you know, it's, it's the sign of a, of a really good team, of a collection of really good players when they can beat you any which way. A one pitch to Nori. He lines that ball into the outfield, drops down into left. They're going to hold up Hayfer Camp at third. Probably a good idea. Great call by Tim Lowry. 
so good at what he does, but the Canes get another. They lead a four to nothing. Yeah, no reason to push it. And, and again, we've talked about him already a bunch, but Corey Moore in left field, good job over there cutting it off. Yeah, he's been uh, busy. Making sure it didn't go up the gap because if, it, if Dante Nori hits the ball up the gap, he might just score. Uh, along with everybody else who was in front of him on base. But no reason to push it. One out, base is still loaded. Number two hitter up. You know, but no reason at all to maybe risk an out at the plate. And there's another run. That one snags Owen Pano. Base is loaded, hit by pitch, 5 nothing Canes. See, that's what's tough, right? When you're playing a team like this, is that you cannot make mistakes. You cannot you afford to give them a free run. You can't give them even, let alone a free run, you can't give them a free base. Yeah, free base, free run. You can't run. give them a free out. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, they are relentless. We say it every year because it, it's true every year. You know, it was not all that long ago. They won three straight Jupiters, I believe. You know, and I don't know if, I, I think they were the only team to have ever done that. That one's gonna get away from the catcher. So Novi comes home to score. Runners will advance. Six to nothing, Canes. Now runners on second and third. And that's just, you know, past balls happen, right? That's a simple past ball, but hey, guess what? The Canes had another runner on third base, so right. it's another run is what it is, you know? PJ Morlando is at the plate. So we talked a little bit earlier in the game about the alum from the elite squad and some of the guys who have come through that organization. How about the Canes? I had this photo on my phone. Brian, I was looking back, because I, I just like to kind of see what were we doing, where were we. I have this photo on my phone of Corbin Carroll and mm. Cade Doty together in their Canes uniforms here at Jupiter in 2018. We're going to show it to you in just a moment. But just really cool to see how far they've come. The alum that go through these organizations as Morlando hits it on the ground through the infield. Both runs will score. And he's going to take second. A bases clearing hit for P.J. Morlando once again. And the Canes on top, eight to nothing. And that's, again, just not trying to do too much. Just it gets barrel on a ball, shoots it back up the middle for a base hit. We're rolling, uh, rolling the good athletes around third base for the runs. And Morlando once again, the exact same thing happened. Saw the throw was going to be high. Saw it wasn't going to get cut off. Takes second base immediately. Now the Canes have another runner in scoring position, and I believe we might be having yet another pitching change. Is that a little Randy Arozarena celebration right there? It's a little give it to me, but then a little something. arm cross. I it's think giving that me one, Randy vibes. I think that one was was maybe uniquely more Lando. Oh. But either way, I, we, we love to see it. We love to watch it. We love to see it. Here's that photo I was talking about, by the way. How, how funny yep. is this? These goofballs, I said, I want to take a picture. And this is Corbin posing Cade being a goofball per usual Cade in the Blue Jays organization and we know Corbin heading to the National League Division Series with the Diamondbacks should be the National League Rookie of the Year this year and listen David Ronsley said it I couldn't agree more I think Corbin will soon be one of the most favorite players generally by Major League fans yes very very soon He's fun. Uh, he always was fun. Uh, you know, we saw it when he was a teenager. It's, yeah. How is this dude who's this skinny hitting the ball that far? <laughs> so <laughs> smart, though. So <laughs> smart, so fast. Yep. I felt like he's such a thinking man. There was no way he wasn't going to make it. Right, right. And now he's still, you know, he's a, he's a grown man and physical now, but he's still, like, not what you would call like a physical monster or anything and he just still oh. hits baseball so far he's so good at what he does I, 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 what was he, how many stolen bases did he have this year a lot was he in the 50s i think so he was, he was close in the if 50s. not yeah. like just unbelievable job by him all right so we've got a pitching change for the ruse kyler martin taking over on the mound the right-handed pitcher plays a lot of different positions though so he's going to get a chance to showcase against this canes team again check out our complex this is the marlin side by the way there's a whole cardinal side as well and a little in the middle so they, they they've got so many fields out here and everyone gets a golf cart and everyone drives around by the way i would just like to make a, a public service announcement that Somebody stole the PG media cart, Darren and I's cart, on day one. Oh. And we haven't gotten it back. So if you happen to look at your cart and you see our names on it, we'd love if you returned it to the media tent. That'd be great, yeah. Marlin 6, third base side, you can return it there. We won't ask questions. Just give it back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no one's going to get in trouble. No. Yeah, I yeah, mean, yeah. We just, well. Maybe a little. Maybe a little I won't trouble. tell you what trouble, but. <laughs> We're not going to call the cops. <laughs> we, listen. Well. Well. <laughs> I'm not, never say never, you know? <laughs> never say never. 
I no. walked I walked past an abandoned <laughs> PGTV cart not all that long ago. Did you? But it, it didn't did say it your say name. D- okay, it. it says yeah. Darren and I's name. So we'll have to wait and see if we get that back. All right. Top three, Kane's up eight to nothing. Runner on second base, just one away in this game. Again, Kyler Martin is the pitcher, the righty facing the ever dangerous four hole hitter in Devin Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald, of course, as we talked about, a switch hitter hitting left handed here against the righty. The Canes would like to keep tacking on. That pitch missing, even the count back up. That one is going to get down outside the infield. Novi comes home. Excuse me, Morlando comes home. Just again, another piece of hit, another good piece of hitting by Devin Fitzgerald. I feel like I've said that 30, 100, 3,000 times this year already. Uh, but kind of went down and got that one. Wasn't trying to do too much. Just, hey, get barrel on ball. Hit a line drive over the second baseman's head. Get yourself an RBI and keep the train rolling. By the way, Devin's brother Hunter in the Mariners organization playing this year. He said my brother's a huge inspiration to me. For him to make it there, for us to be as close as we are, pretty awesome. Brother's a big, big dude. Big power. Hunter, like 6'5", 230 or whatever he's listed at. He's a large human being. 6'5", 230. Drafted by the Rockies in the 33rd round back in 2019. We don't have that round anymore. And trying to make his way now through the Mariners organization. Chris Newstrom, the batter, <laughs> takes ball one low. Remember when we had 33 rounds? <laughs> Remember when we had 40? We had 40. Yeah. Remember 50? No, barely. I wasn't alive yet. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> barely, yeah. <laughs> Painful to I be honest. I vaguely remember 50. Vaguely. Yeah. It's kind of crazy to think how the draft has evolved the way it has. Yep. And, and the minor league systems as well. Less players, right? Yep. So less need for so many rounds in the draft. That's a fly ball to center field. Devin Fitzgerald had to go all the way back to first. There was only one away. So now there's two away. And we will see Noah Franco hit now. All right, two away, top three. Kane's up nine to nothing. Runner on first. No, Franco the batter. Fitzgerald stays over at first. Franco, obviously a, a Californian That's right. who attends IMG Academy. But made sure, and this was influenced by the Floridians on our scouting staff, made sure that his hometown was updated to Bradenton. <laughs> Did he? Yeah. He's all in on Bradenton. Is that Shouts right? out to, to the Floridians <laughs> of the PG scouting staff. Who they go hard, Influenced don't they? that. Now they get to claim him as a Florida guy. It's a whole mess. It's a whole mess. I, f- I feel conflicted that he... He did that. Does that mean he's giving up his Californian ship? I, I think as far as like who gets to claim him as an amateur player, maybe. That's awesome. Yeah. Congrats yeah. for you, Noah. In the rules that we made up. Hey, Noah's uncommitted. Yeah. Yeah. Surprising for a player of, of where he's at. Try, he's just taking extra time on his decision. The reality of the situation is, and like I don't know if this is ever like said out loud, but when you're that good, you don't have to feel rushed. Right. It's on your There's time. There's a spot for you no wherever you want to no go. No one's pulling his offer and trying to put a time clock on him. Like, I, no. I think any college team would be so lucky to have this guy. What a great kid. Great family as he works a two-out walk. His family, his dad's from Mexico. His mom's from Guatemala. Mom born in Guatemala. Dad was born in the United States but lived in Mexico for 14 years. 
He can cook like none other. The family meals are incredible, he told me when we were at the All-American game. Like, my mouth was watering just listening to him talk about some of the food that they eat together, all the Mexican food, when they, when they are all home together in California, which doesn't happen maybe as often as they'd like because Noah is in Florida and uh, is claiming to be a Floridian. <laughs> Sounds like... Uh Maybe I'll go to that draft party. I think that would be a clutch one to go to. Cooking. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I would guess that would be a great one to be at. Listen, they're talking about. Let me see. He told me here. Um, pazole, that's soup with chicken, mole. Mm. They're all made, homemade food. It's incredible. So it looks like Briggs Sullivan is the batter for the Canes. They're going to give him an at bat. And you'll see this, obviously, a big lead early in the game. Uh, you know, outcome not really in doubt. Um, why not get everyone in at bat? Why not, you know, stretch your bullpen out a little bit? You can do a lot of things here with a lead like this, and the Canes will. The Canes do. Fouls that pitch off into the Canes dugout. Clemson commit out of Mount Pleasant, South Carolina. I saw a lot of Clemson gear here. Mm -hmm. Eric Backage's program. I saw them out in full force here riding their golf carts. Recklessly, might I add. <laughs> I saw you guys. That purple and orange stands out. It does stand out. It catches your eye. I pitch low. Martin ahead. It's a one two count, two away, top three. Top tier ruse won yesterday against Elite, two to nothing. Tall task this afternoon against the Canes National New York Mets scout team. That one is hit in the air, drops down over third base. It's going to score a run. That'll be 10 for the Canes. Just again, you know, another good base running there. Franco was tearing around second base. He was looking to come into third, take the extra base, but saw that the left fielder was up with it. There was no, you know, airmail throw to home or anything, so smartly stopped there. But a good piece of hitting by Sullivan. Get you a base hit when you have an opportunity. When they give you an at bat, take advantage of it, and he did. How about the respect, though, also for Corey Moore's arm? I mean, that yeah. dude has put it all on the line today. He sure has. And while he hasn't necessarily made the plays, I will remember that. Yeah, absolutely. Dude was Superman diving to both sides. Unbelievable. The Canes have put up an eight spot in the third. They'd won in the first and one in the second. It was a two nothing game coming into this inning. A check down of the runner. Jack Haferkamp back at the plate. Swing and a miss, 0-2 count. Took a good swing earlier, hit a double yesterday, took a good swing. We talked about the, the, the consistency and the refinement of the hit tool, you know, needing to, to be developed here. And, and just in the last couple of days, that's going to be an out. But either way, there's been some promising signs the last couple of days, things we like to see. And that's going to end the top of the third inning. The Canes have put up eight. It's 10 to nothing over top tier Ruse. We're coming back, bottom three. The Ruse will get a chance to bat. I'm up for the sun in the morning. I 
told him this ain't a game. Welcome back. The Canes National New York Mets up 10 to nothing over top tier Ruse at the 2023 WWBA World Championship. I'm Danny Wexelman with Brian Sikowski on PGTV. And we told you what this lineup is capable of, and now you've seen it. The Canes have brought 26 guys to the plate. The Ruse just six. They don't have a hit, they don't have a run. So they're looking to break that right now. That's not easy to do against Max Ulrich. He's doing a great job out there. He really hasn't had to work too hard. We'll see if the Ruse maybe can make him work a little bit harder in this frame. Yeah, he's just, uh, you know, he just sat down for a long time. Uh, it was maybe a 40 minute half inning or something like that. So, um, you know, it may be a little rusty here in his first couple pitches, but I like the idea of getting him back out there, letting him eat. He, he probably is going to be his last inning. I, I don't know. Most of the time, the Canes have uh, the dudes on a pitch count and, and it's limited innings, and they like to stretch guys out in terms of maybe throwing multiple times in five days instead of once for a long right. uh, outing. So we'll see what the plan is uh, with, with Arlick, but I, I would imagine this may be his last inning. He's facing Dylan Taft. By the way, top tier Ruse tomorrow playing Rawlings National Scout Team, and Canes National will play Team Elite Prime. So we're going to miss from Taft. And that's a whiff out of the zone at the top of the zone in a 2-0 yeah. count. That's when you're sitting heater in a crushable spot. So uh, that says something about something when it comes to Arlick's fastball quality. Top fouls that off, 2-2 count. He told us that his grandfather was a shortstop who played at Mississippi State. Mom was a professional equestrian hunter and jumper. So he's got some athletic genes in him. He's kind of just been learning to grow into his body. Six foot four, 225, he told us, mm -hmm. as he leaves that one up. And he said he's been growing constantly for the past few years. The best thing he did, got into exercising and yoga, because once he learned how his body works, he said everything else kind of came. Swing and a miss, though, Ulrich gets the strikeout. We hear that a lot of guys at this age, and I would say from like 13 to 18, talking to them about their growth spurts. Mm -hmm. And Anson Seibert comes to mind just the amount of growth and trying to have your the rest of your body catch up isn't easy. It's very, very difficult. It just inherently is difficult. And it's something we talk about maybe more specifically with pitchers all the time yeah. about these the, the guys who are 16, 17 years old and they're big, long, tall build. And like you said, with, with a guy like Siebert where, hey, I was 6'2 three months ago and now I'm 6'7, you yeah. know, those kind of things. You are in an entirely new body at that point. <laughs> so you have to relearn how to coordinate everything. It's very interesting. So when we see these big, physical, tall kids who are repeating their deliveries well and they're throwing strikes, even in spite of these growth spurts, that's when we start talking about athletes on the mound, you know? And, and, and Arlick looks to be one of those guys, and yoga obviously can help anybody uh, with anything for the most part, but another, another ground ball out there. Ground ball out off the bat of Ethan Burkhart, I actually was talking about um, Dylan Taft, or excuse me, uh, Ethan Burkhart. No, Dylan Taft. I, I was talking about Dylan Taft and his body, but yes, for Ulrich mm -hmm. as well. And big dudes in general. Big dudes yeah. growing fast, 100%. Yeah, it's not an easy thing to do. There's two away, bottom three. Kane's up by 10. Good layoff there. He's gotten a lot of swings and misses on that pitch in that exact location, even with 2-0 count, so good job to lay off. to strike three one count Arlick's sitting in that upper 80s now uh, you know he was up to 90 several times early but kind of sitting right now in that 86 87 88 range that ball is just foul outside outside excuse me the third base Yeah. 
Mark Hirsch, the batter. Worked it full. Lays off. Good at bat there. Their first base runner of the afternoon. Yeah, good at bat there. Those are pitches that uh, Arluck's gotten swings and misses on uh, consistently throughout the course of his outing so far. So good job to lay off those pitches that are that are belt high and a, and a little bit higher than that and borderline strikes and not chasing, not giving in to the pitcher. He's good at bat. All right, Daniel Spiker comes up. It's got to be a top five name here. Great name. Great name. He's got nothing on Atticus Huffstetler, but Man. it's still a good game. Good name. All team name. All name team. For sure. All name team. We should do an all name team from Jupiter. I would love Don't that. Don't you think? Yes. yes, absolutely. A one pitch coming. It's lifted in the air to center. And they make the grab. Base runner is stranded. So no runs allowed in this inning. The Canes are rolling right now. We head to the fourth. They're up by 10. Welcome back to Roger Dean, the WWBA World Championship, the 25th annual Perfect Game WWBA World Championship deserves that title. It is a beautiful Friday afternoon, Golf Cart Central, home of the Cardinals and the Marlins. We take over all weekend long here for the World Championship. We got our championship game on Monday right here on PGTV. This is our second game today. Danny Wexelman, Brian Sikowski, and we've been talking about the Canes, how dangerous they are. Every guy in the lineup has been on base today, multiple times today. It is a relentless one through nine. I want nothing to do with them if I am a pitcher. I really don't. Listen, I'd love to go toe to toe, no doubt about it, and take my chances, but there's just no relief. Mm -hmm. It's such, a, it's such a remarkable one through nine or one through 10, one through 11, even when they do it. They have four guys with multiple hits. Like you said, everyone's at least been on base. Uh, they're doing it without a ton of power in this game, but they haven't needed to. Mm -hmm. Base runners and work walks and get hit and, and then hit singles. It, you know, it's a, a good way to win, but it is a relentless one through nine. And their pitching staff's pretty relentless too. Brandon Novi, the batter, takes the ball too low. It's a 2 1 count. New pitcher on the mound for top tier. This is Jackson Krukanis, the right handed pitcher. He's taken over for top tier Ruse, trying to go out there and just do his thing mm -hmm. at this point. That's, yep. that's all that they're looking for. Do your thing. Get some reps. Yeah, he's uncommitted from Palm Harbor, Florida. He's sitting in the mid 80s to start, mostly at 85. Let's see, it's 6 2, 190 frame. Krukanis is a dual enrollment student, by the way. 413 weighted high school GPA. That ball is fouled off. 40 college GPA. He was eligible to graduate after his junior year. 
he had all his required credits finished, which is incredible to say the very least that he was that committed to the classroom. Pretty good there. Wow. Three, two pitch, and there's strike three. Great, great pitch and a great spot there, I, truly. Uh, fastball, that was maybe a ball width on the outside of the plate, but generally speaking, in high school baseball, you're going to get that much, and I think he put it right where he needed to, and then uh, Novi's got to pull the trigger. It's a great pitch. Presley Corville will come up and get in a bat. Catch your second baseman. Should see uh, probably a couple guys from the Canes coming off the bench here. And like we said, they keep a very, very small number of underclassmen uh, on their main team, their main 17U team roster, 18U now that we're in the fall. Um, but, you know, you got to be really, really good to make this team as an underclassman. And Corville is one of those guys. Corville committed to Texas A&M out of Lake Charles. Goes to Barb High School. We love Barb High School. There's a strike. Landon Victorian's catcher, I think, right? Oh, that sounds yeah, about right. There you go. That would be right. Just saw Landon, PG All-American. Noted All-American. That's right. Swing and a miss for another strikeout. Back-to-back -back Ks now for the pitcher. Kukonis is, uh, he's really having a lot of success painting that fastball and that outside edge against uh, the right-handed hitters. And now he'll have to face lefties, of course. But pa painting that mid-80s fastball on that outer edge, ball width off the plate for the righties, had a, had a strike three called, had one just swung and missed at there, just keeps owning that side of the plate. And it should be successful against lefties, too, if he's able to stay in there. Owen oh, Payno, the batter. Got a run and an RBI in this game, hit by pitch earlier. Lays off ball two. Pino's last name appropriate, by the way. I feel like he, he really does hurt baseballs, really inflicts a lot of pain <laughs> on them, don't you think? Absolutely. Yeah. I've been meaning to ask him about that. Really got to get on that. Pops up all foul out of play. If he only had an hour to train every day, he said he would spend 40 minutes hitting, 20 minutes doing infield work. Sure. I respect that. No doubt. You make the money with the bat. You make a lot of money if you can do both. But they mostly care about the bat. There's a strike. The one thing I will say is with the ban of the shift, you are kind of seeing a separation at the big league level of the elite gloves compared to the guys who maybe are not quite as elite. Absolutely. That shift helped, helped us hide a lot of guys. Yeah. Made a lot of below average defenders look okay. 100%. I mean, I, I get to see Francisco Lindor a lot in New York and just watching some of the plays that he's been able to make this year. I mean, the, sh the banning of the shift has allowed him to show that off. Absolutely. And he was a guy that he didn't need it. You know what I mean? He didn't need the shift to look great. Didn't. But. Didn't need it. So Pena walks. There's two way top four. Jordan Oliveira will step up to the plate, get his first dip out of the game. Pops it up. We'll see if we stay stays in. Nice play. Great grab by the first baseman for the third out of the frame. That is Atticus Huffstutler making the grab at first. Nice defense. Nice job, by the way. If when you're coming into this game for Jackson Krakonis, great job by him. Two strikeouts and a pop out. Absolutely. He was owning that that uh, arm arm side edge, or excuse me, glove side edge of the plate. And he did it against righties and lefties. Got weak contact. Got some whiffs. But here's our recap, Danny. Here's how we got where we are. Canes were putting pressure early. They were doing everything and anything to get on base and were doing so successfully. 
thought top tier was limiting the damage, but then the third inning happened, and all of a sudden things got away, and now it's 10 nothing. But, uh, yeah, that's that's how we are where we were. We, we Max Arlick did a great job on the mound for the Canes. The entire lineup has been hitting. We've seen some power. We've seen some moving runners. We've seen some stolen bases and extra bases taken and hitting to the opposite field and everything and every, and anything. And the Canes are up 10 nothing. Be a new arm here for the Canes, I believe, in, in relief of Arlick. This will be Blake Larson, a hey, native Iowan. Hey, before we get to him, just, just give me a, a quick 10 second on Arlick. Yeah, I thought Arlick was good. It, he's got a lot of uh, things to like in terms of the way the fastball plays at the top of the zone and the way he release, releases it and the action that he gets on it. He's really, really good when he's able to command it to the top of the strike zone. We saw him get swings and misses up there. We saw him get swings and misses in the upper part of the strike zone. So still a strike. Uh, we saw him get swings and misses above that. Didn't need the secondary stuff very much today, but we know he has a pretty solid curveball. It was a good look from him. Nothing, you know, business as usual for him in my mind. Taking care of business for the Canes, hoping to advance to 2-0 in pool play. As you said, Blake Larson taking over the TCU commit from Des Moines, Iowa, but goes to IMG Academy. So unsure if he's claimed Florida for himself as well. No Franco may, may be whispering in his ear, though. Well, he's actually a Midwesterner, so I refuse to allow it. I mean, I'm the same. Yeah, I Don't get me wrong. Yeah. I'd be offended. The Cali kids, like, do whatever you want, but <laughs> if you're from the Midwest and go to IMG, you keep that Iowa. Miles <laughs> Davis still has Marion, Iowa on his uh, when he's at A3. Uh, you got some incredible way. talent out of that state. <laughs> incredible <laughs> talent. You better claim that for the rest of your life, my friend. All-state freshman of the year as well. Larson is electric. This will be electric. The strikes have been hit and miss for the majority of his career. Uh, we've seen him have some outings where he's around the zone, and, and but either way, it is electric. And even if he walks one or two, you can bet that everyone here has got the radar gun up and taking notes. Oh, no doubt about it. It feels like there's a little more excitement right now around this field. We're at Marlins 6 right now. You can kind of see. Look at all the scouts standing mm -hmm. right behind. They've got their radar guns yep. ready to go for Larson. This is awesome, actually. This is, this is the epitome of Jupiter for yes, me. Yes, very much so. Very much so. When one guy comes in and the entire uh, facility moves to go watch him. 2-0 pitch to Jace Kohler. That one paints for strike one. So something that Larson shared with us, you kind of mentioned it. He's got that whippy arm sitting 93-96. He said, you better hit the fastball because the sliders will wipe out and basically unhittable. Yeah, and it is. Uh, you know, he can really back foot it to righties. It's got a sharp bite. It's got a lot of break to it. Um, but the thing with Larson always is and has been and, and will continue to be for at least the foreseeable future is it's about the command development. It's about the physical development. You can see he's still very, very skinny, very, very slender frame. And that's just, it, that's unhittable there, that fastball. That's a 3-1 fastball right down the middle and no chance to get there. So once again, the depth of the Canes is really shining brightly because you think that you've got the starter out of the game. Maybe we go to the pen. There's relief from the relief pitcher. There's zero relief from this guy. You mentioned it. He is a really young guy, too. And so just to get a chance, that's why you see the scouts there. They get to see him. Like, this is exciting for them. And he gets the strikeout. He comes out throwing 93-mile-an-hour fastballs with all arms and legs flying at you from, from the mound, and he's a little bit lower slot. He's throwing crossfire. <laughs> that one's on the inner third at 93 for a called third. Just uh, he's, it's electric. Like we said, when it's in the zone, it's, it's pretty close to unhittable at this level. Daniel Perella, the Dariel, excuse me, Perella, the leadoff hitter for the Ruse at the plate, takes a strike at the bottom of the zone. Let me ask you this. Do you remember the first time you saw Blake Larson? He's in the 24 class, but do you remember the first time you saw him? On TV at the festival. That was the very first time Great I saw call. him. Great on call. On TV at the festival. Wow. I was virtually hanging out with you and Sutton and Jeremy and the whole crew, but uh, I was at home. But, yeah, you know. Put my memory on display right now. <laughs> You're really spotlighting my memory at this point. <laughs> My bad. I was watching from afar <laughs> from Fort Myers, Florida. <laughs> and he's grown a ton. Still yes. so much room to grow. Still so much room to fill out. And we've seen the slider. The first slider he threw was the first pitcher this at bat. Big breaker. 
Lots of action to it, lots of movement. Been up to 94 with the fastball now. That one's on the ground, out of play. Two two to Perella. That one's gonna bounce away. Back door. So it brings the count full. Ball four high. And you can see just that, like that's what we're talking about. He's not necessarily spraying the backstop. He's not necessarily, you know, uh, throwing balls to the screen or over the uh, hitting the bull to use a Bull Durham reference. But uh, it's still scattered. It's still it, the way he moves is so explosive and fast, and the arm speed is so fast, and his body is still so slender that he doesn't necessarily have the stability in the delivery and the strength in the delivery to repeat it moving that fast and that violently. So once he really puts on the weight and he puts on some strength and, and gets more muscle on his frame, he's going to be able to be more stable in that delivery, move with the same speed and, and torque and, and uh, strength and force, but control it more. And that will be what we hope leads to command. Jacob Lozano, the batter for the Ruse. He'll get his first at bat of the day. Uncommitted out of Tampa, Florida. <laughs> A sea of bucket hats. Absolutely. We are still in Florida. Got to keep that sun off. You know, I only own one bucket hat. It feels low. Yeah, it is. It is. Go over to Merge Tent. I need to go to the Merge Tent. Get you a couple. <laughs> Fired in for strike two. It's a one-two count to Lozano. What we're seeing Larson spin it more. Last couple hitters, he spun the ball more. And it's uh, it's a little bit inconsistent in terms of the shape, but it's, boy, it's a snapdragon when he gets it. One, two, pitch coming. High and inside for ball two. Runner takes off, stand up at second base. Perella takes the bag. It's a 3-2 count. Larson's been mostly 92-93. He's grabbed a four. Um, that slider's been in that 77-78 range. Big, big sweep on the pitch. But needs to buckle down, needs to get back in the zone. He's overpowering when he's in it, but he has to be in it. Quick chat, getting on the same page. It's Chris Newstrom behind the plate. The scouts are staying. One away, bottom four, runner on second, three, two pitch coming. Ooh. Ball in the dirt. Throw down for the strikeout. A 3 2 slider at the back foot. <laughs> Vicious. Vicious from Mr. Larson. That's, you know, a 3 2 count, you generally think fastball, Oof. but from a guy who's, who's had a little bit of trouble commanding the fastball, why not throw a slider? And that was disgusting. It looked like a fastball down the middle, 80% of the way there, and then the next thing you know, you're swinging and missing over the top of it by two feet. That was gross. So, two way bottom four. Perella took third on the play. 
Atticus Huffstetler steps up. Pops the first pitch he sees out of play. All right, so I wanted to tell you about this nickname earlier because I think it might be one of the best that I saw on all the bios. And I appreciate Atticus sharing this with us because not always do they. Addy Daddy. Addy Daddy. Addy Daddy. Absolutely, yes. But not only that, let me blow your mind with this as well. Give me a second. Let me pull it up. He's an elite water skier. Yes, he is. Slalom water skier. If he wasn't playing baseball, he would be a Division I water skier. Uh, absolutely. That's outstanding. That's, like, really impressive. Just to let yeah. everybody know, water sports in general are very hard. Got to have strong oh legs. Oh, my gosh. You have to be so strong. Strong legs to do those. To do anything impressive on water. Daddy Daddy, the elite slalom water skier. Only in Jupiter, Danny. Only in Jupiter. Only in Jupiter. Only in Jupiter. That is incredible. Larson ahead, 1 2. Runner on third. Two away. Ooh, thought he had, had the K it. strut. Thought had the K had strut it. running. Not quite. Not quite. Pitch was probably it was probably a couple ball whiffs off the plate inside. I, like I think that was a ball, but uh, that's still a pretty well located pitch, especially because that is where the catcher was calling for it. Antonio Pinzone, our plate umpire, Luis Gonzalez, in the field for our game. That one just missing as well. So now count is full. That one's chopped on the ground. Third base line, backhanded play. The throw across. Wow, what an incredible job, not just by the third baseman, but the first baseman as well. Briggs Sullivan, who came in to bat, making that incredible play. Great job by the defense for the Canes. The Roos got their first runner over to third in this one, but it has been all Canes. Look at this backhanded play. Grabs it, stops his feet, fires across. That's what we're talking about. You Noah know, Franco. Make plays, make plays. That's him. He's made a bunch of different good plays at wow. first base today. You know, good athlete over there, long body. To be an icon, you have to be good on and off the field. The gold and black is iconic. I just love how they mesh together at the top. The eye combat is very balanced and light feel, which allows you to trust your barrel. It feels good when you swing it. Icon's different because of the sweet spot felt huge. The pop, you just throw the bat out and the ball just flies. If you're an elite player, you'll love the icon. Being in the wild is the best when you're with your family. We do all kinds of different things at camp. Go fish, surf, dive. I think I'll probably be coming out here the rest of my life. All right, welcome back to Jupiter, Florida. This is game two of two on PGTV. Kane's up 10 to nothing. The scouts came out to see Blake Larson. Look at the box score here. They put up eight in the third. They haven't, their pitching staff hasn't allowed a hit or a run. They did, the, the Roos had a base runner who got to third, but pretty impressive stat line on both sides. Absolutely. And Larson was, uh, you know, I, it sounds, uh, Larson was kind of what we expect him to be. Absolutely electric. Flashes of an absolutely dynamic breaking ball. An unhittable fastball given the, the various traits and the way he releases it and the deception. But still coming into his own as a strike thrower, coming into his own as a command guy. And I explained why. 
you know, we got to get a little bit stronger, got to get a little more physical. That stability will allow you to control that force you're generating and that right. arm speed. And that's when we'll see command. And when he gets that, watch out. I'm excited about that. We've got a new arm on the mound for the Roos. Riley McDonald will take over. He's facing Will Sanford. We mentioned Sanford earlier, the amount of top 100 prospects. Also some new guys on the team this year. They had to replenish the pitching staff a little bit, replenish a couple of faces. Will Sanford, the guy. Shouts out, of course, to Darren Sutton, right here to our right. <laughs> Can I just tell you, Darren's calling me in the middle of the broadcast as if he doesn't know what we're doing. <laughs> Come on, d -Sut. As if you're not sitting right here with the headset on. Come on, my guy. <laughs> I know it looks like I'm not doing anything, but I Look, am. Looks like he's getting some content with Owen Pano. I'm sure we'll see that cut up and beautiful shortly on PG social media. I'm pretty sure Owen Pano, by the way, at the Classic gave a fantastic sandwich shop recommendation for Poughkeepsie. Okay. I can't be for certain, but I'm pretty sure that is something that occurred. Okay. I would be interested in the name of that sandwich shop. Where's the best sandwich you've ever eaten? Ooh. Subway, no. Um. Oh, boy. <laughs> uh, I'd have to think about that. You the, gotta, the Subway in New York City. <laughs> <laughs> you got to give me a second <laughs> for that one. The best sandwich shop. There's one down in the Lower East Side, which is close to where I live in New York. I'm blanking on the name right now, but I'll get it. It's a classic Italian sandwich shop. Mm. I think the best one I've ever had was in Atlantic City, believe it or not. Really? Like White House Subs or something like that in Atlantic City. It was Underrated. nuts. It was amazing. Guess I gotta look it up, huh? Three, two count to Sanford. Reaches for it, fouls it off. That one inside on the hands, he fouls it off. Good at bat, good battle here. Long at bat here to start. Looks like this will be pitch nine or 10, maybe? Quite the battle. That one misses, so Stanford works a walk. All right, so Chris Newstrom comes up. Hit in the air, right field. Can't see Can't it. Can't see it. Oh, the sun got him, and the ball's going to drop. That's just tough luck. Hard to do it with a high sky. And we're getting uh, getting into the afternoon hours, so the sun's starting to tilt a little bit on us. Well, the clouds have right parted it. a little. Yeah, yep, sun's back out. But, uh, Newstrom... Uh, what did I hear at the break? A Mandarin speaker as oh, well? Oh, yes, yes, A Mandarin yes. I mean, speaker? This man is very, very impressive. That's outstanding. A very versatile ways. baseball profile as well as a very vers versatile, like, personal profile. There's the sun. She's shining. She's bright. So he can speak Mandarin. It's amazing. <laughs> it's, uh, if he goes into international studies, even more amazing. Absolutely. No, Franco the batter. The other thing that that we asked these guys, we told you, who's gonna win the World Series? Very adamant, it's LA. There's like a 100 exclamation points because it's LA. Mm. Because it's LA. Mm. I don't know, has he seen the Braves play? Mm. I don't know, I don't know. 
To me, it, it really doesn't matter who wins the World Series because the Detroit Lions are the best team in football. No, Franco <laughs> rips that ball down the right field line. He's done that twice in this game now, finding the line, finding it fair. This time, he stands up at third base, clearing him. Two more for the Canes, 12 to nothing, top five. That's going to leave Franco, I think, a bomb shy of the cycle. I think he's gone single, double, triple now. But either way, yeah, just sneak it down the line and, and get on your horse. Um, another, good another good piece of hitting. He's a big dude who can move pretty well. That ball's hit pretty well down the line. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that he murdered her to hit her or anything, but that's a well-struck ball. Uh, gets sneaks down the line. He gets on his horse, scores a couple runs, and just like that, 12 nothing Canes. Briggs Sullivan comes back. He made a fantastic play last inning over at third base. Backhand throw across the diamond. No Franco doing some maneuvering at first. It was fantastic. No outs, top five, runner on third. It's a 1-1 one, one count. Bouncing ball, foul. I should have I should have brought my glove. I made a mistake. Yeah, you that was coming Shoot. at us. I made a mistake. Dang it. How are you ever supposed to catch a foul ball if you don't bring a glove? Well Where where are you at on adults with gloves at the ballpark? Yeah, I knew you were gonna ask that I, question. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, if you catch it and you're an adult, you better give it to a kid. Yes. Firm agree. Fly ball into center field. Franco tags at third and will score. It's the first out of the fifth for the Ruse. 13 to nothing, Canes. And this will be, we'll play the bottom half, of course, but at this point it's uh, uh, the eight after five uh, run rule will, will most likely trigger, I would imagine, after the bottom of the fifth inning. We're right back here tomorrow on PGTV. Darren Sutton, David Ronsley, they'll have the early game, 10 a.m. And then you, Brian Sikowski, will come in for the afternoon game. Do I have that schedule right? Yeah, I think I'm going to look right now. I think you're right. Okay. We got to double check that. You got to know when you got to be here. <laughs> oh, no. Tomorrow is me on the early oh. game. We switched it up. Good thing we checked. We switched it up. Fact checking at its finest, journalism at its finest. I'll be on the mic at 1020. You better with get some Darren. coffee, buddy. Oh, please. <laughs> Who needs coffee in Jupiter except for everyone? <laughs> Make it a double. <laughs> one away, Jack Haferkamp, the batter, 2 1 count. A pitch fired in for strike two. And then we'll call playoff games together Sunday. Sunday. Big <laughs> Sunday, baby. I mean, tomorrow is a huge day for mm -hmm. Major League Baseball. Four games late. All the division series get set, but you should stay here. Yes. Stay yes. here. Keep us on your second screen. Jupiter's where it is. This is the future. You have us during the day, and we'll be at night. Yeah. It seems fair. Yeah, great plan. Two, it's a two-screen yeah. generation anyway. I have the playoffs on the iPad and us on the 70-inch in the, in the living room. 100%. Yeah, you know. Speaking of broadcasting, Jack Haferkamp hits that ball in the air to center. Coming a long way. Nice job to reel it in and make that catch. That's Darielle Perella playing center field. Haferkamp wants to be a broadcaster one day. Maybe we should have brought him over. He, I, he can come up. Yeah. I, I know he's in the middle of the game, but look, there we are. He could just hop right over if he wants to call the bottom of the fifth. What do you think? I'll go play center field. <laughs> and he can. Yeah. Did you bring your glove? <laughs> I did not. Okay. Well. <laughs> I'll borrow his. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Anyone okay. have some spikes? <laughs> yeah. Listen, we have everything you need. We'll put you out there. Put me in, coach. Yeah, I love that. Don't hit it to me. After his very long, successful career, he'll head up to the booth. Much like Adam Wainwright. How about that? Absolutely. Calls it a career. He's going to head up to the booth for the postseason. Another fly ball in the air. Diving attempt. What a catch. The outfield, the effort from top tier Roos has been top notch in this game. Dariel Perella yeah, doing a fantastic job covering a lot of ground. Yeah, and he's shown the range out there. Like that's a you know a smaller, speedy athlete, but this is a great job. It's a great jump. Get moving into the gap. 
didn't need to fully lay out, so he didn't. He just, you know, caught it as he was falling down. And, and, and hey, great range, great athleticism, good play to end the half. Let's go bottom five. Welcome back, Jupiter, Florida, home of the 2023 WWBA World Championship, the 25th annual WWBA World Championship. Might I add, the scouts having themselves a day, day two here in Florida. It's beautiful out there. You can see the Pittsburgh Pirates out here scouting. The Canes have done a fantastic job. The bats have been incredible as far as spraying their hits putting them in different parts of this field, not trying to do too much, to be honest, which I'm really impressed by. They've taken their walks. They've been patient at the plate. Really a complete win right now. They've got to hold on, though, and they're going to try to do it, and I think that they have a good chance of doing it with Tate Strickland. Yeah, another new arm here. Bring him in for uh, a one-inning relief look. This is uh, one of those looks that is specifically for scouts. Like, hey, here you go. You know, like this is our... We'll get a look at Strickland here and, and then maybe again in the playoffs, similar with Larson. Um, but, yeah, it, Strickland's got a power arm. He's 6'3", 180. He's an athlete. He has arm speed. Was at the National Showcase. He's been up to 97 miles per hour. He's from Powder Springs, Georgia, Tennessee commit. Facing Alex Walker for the ruse. 1-0 pitch coming. That one is on the ground, just foul of the third base bag. On the ground, up the middle, gloved and thrown over, makes the play look really easy. Jordan Oliveira up the middle, smooth, smooth defender. We've seen him play a couple, you know, he's, he's there at second base. We've seen him play short. He can probably play third base too, but just a really smooth defender. Let's talk about Noah Franco here, Danny. Nice. What a day. Ooh. Three hits, <laughs> a double and a triple, has gone down both lines, as you see there. Uh, has made several really good plays at first base, stretching and, and showing his athleticism and length and, and, and soft hands. Really good day from him, the number five ranked player in the country. And remember, he was a reclass from 2025. This was, uh, right. Noah Franco was originally a 2025 grad who reclassed up to 24, came onto the circuit, intent to play up, play up with the best. He's here with the Canes. He went to IMG to further challenge himself. And I think he's answered a lot of questions this summer as a hitter especially. Important to remember, he's also a really good pitcher too, as a right. left-handed arm, two-way guy. But I think he's answered a lot of questions as a hitter, and he looks great. Jack Ernest, the batter, uncommitted out of Tampa, Florida. He made a dynamite web gem earlier in this game in right field. It was Gabe Frazier, right? Off the bat of Gabe Frazier? Yeah, I think that's right. Yeah, yep. fantastic play by him. It's a 2-1 count. 
Strickland in the 91-94 range of this fastball so far. That ball is hit on the ground, third base side. Sullivan again makes the play across the diamond. Two away for the Canes. All right, don't be sad. This is our last game today on PGTV, but we're back tomorrow. Brian Sikowski on that 10-20 game, USA Prime Tigers versus Bomb Bat Scout here on PGTV. Don't be late. We got two games for you. So we're here all afternoon, two more on Sunday, and then we have our, ch excuse me, not two on Sunday, two on Saturday, two on Sunday, and then the championship game on Monday. That's right. That's what it is. That's right. You'll have the dulcet tones of Darren Sutton and David Ronsley for that championship game. So someone might have fallen off of a cart three feet to our left there. We're sorry if you heard a loud exclamation. On the ground, eaten up. Oliveira makes the play. Speed down the line. Took his time a little bit there. Yeah. Took his time and got beat. Look at that, like you love to see that. Like that's a routine ground ball to second base. You're down 12 to nothing. This is the last inning because of the run rule and you are busting it down the line. You love to see that. That's awesome hustle. Ricky Stegbauer getting his first at bat, making it count. Yeah, mm. that's what we talk about. You get one at bat in a game that you lose 12 nothing, make it count. Re make us remember you and we'll remember that. His coaches will remember that. Riley McDonald comes up. Oh, good pitch inside to paint. 0-2 oh, count. Did he check his swing? Looks like he's saying he went around. Said he went around. So strikeout out number three. That's going to end the game. The Canes win by a score of 13 to nothing. And they roll on to 2-0 and oh in pool play. The Ruse will move on to be 1-1 one and one in pool play. And I think it's easy to say that up and down this lineup, the Canes are dangerous. They're exciting to watch. This feels like a professional game yeah, when you sure watch does. them play. It really does. You've got a slew of top prospects, PG All-Americans, guys who will be high draft picks coming up next July. Yeah, absolutely. And they won the game today doing everything well. They pitched it well. They played pretty good defense. They ran the bases well. They hit well. They hit for some power. They moved runners. They did everything you need to win a baseball game. And they did so pretty resoundingly, obviously, at 13-0. They are a favorite to win Jupiter, as they are every year. They are one of the best teams in the world, as they